Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Rule the Waves as Austria-Hungary. I'm getting into a surprise battle. Um, we're, our battle cruiser Trieste is chasing down something. I might not end up... I've already gone like a five months or so off camera. The idea is to try to just play every single battle I can to force a capitulation from the French. So uh, this is not when I had an option. And I probably could have just simulated it, but I always enjoy seeing our new battle, cra battle cruiser class, and this is probably an armor merchant cruiser. Just doesn't stand a freaking chance, um, especially because they don't even have torpedoes. So this will be probably extremely quick. I'm just going to chase it down directly. We have the superimposed turrets, which is still even at not, uh, I mean, even at head-on is going to give us a full barrage of six, which is pretty good. And um, <clears throat> that took exactly 35 minutes, so pretty good. Not still nothing compared to the amazing performance of the Four Fox, but enough. I've sung her praises probably f enough at this point. So, all right. Well, this is how things are going basically. Uh, a lot of these engagements are very short, and I would say they're getting to the point of being boring, just because uh, you know when the war drags on for like 10 episodes. That means it's probably been like, you know, like three hours of gameplay, uh, maybe even more. I'm just constantly getting these battles, and the fleet battles, of, don't get me wrong, are extremely interesting. But we're starting to get to the point where these things are just not as exciting as they once were. The, the war's over, there's no longer any kind of uh, mystery about it. So without suspense, without the like drama of the, invo the engagement, it's not quite as interesting. It's just like sinking a bunch of ships for the sake of sinking ships. Now I did um, just right before that um, battle cruiser engagement, I was able to, uh, I got the same like total war is the shortest type pop-up where it asks you how much you want to pr push the population. And at the cost of budget and at the cost of prestige, it hurt both. It's probably just like this one. No, it doesn't it's not giving me options. Well, we'll do this one. Anyways, uh, basically I said, go ahead and relieve the population of some, uh, any kind of pressure. And it dropped us down to six unrest for, I guess, just only a moment. Okay. The Fido, I wonder what class ship this is. Hmm. We'll find out by right clicking Novara. Okay, well. That's nice because it has the max speed of 26. That's something we can work with. Okay, get all these things out. And max speed and stay above them. Okay, what do we have here? It's not a heavy cruiser because they don't have any. <laughs> so that means it must be a light cruiser. So we'll just go right for it. In fact, we'll just go ahead and take the upper side and let's encourage torpedo launching. Okay, good. Let me make sure that's stuck. It did. Good. We got a few hits off as well. We go fast. I don't. We can just quickly do these turns. Actually, I don't find fast or uh, normal makes a huge difference. It's mainly if you can continuously run the game or not. But I mean, this is obviously uh, this is practically over before it started. They have the. This is the four-inch gun variety, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so they have five four-inch guns per side, and I have, I think we're, we're firing five six-inch guns, so it's just, uh, we simply outclass them. I don't want to get too close to their torpedoes, so we're going to go ahead and double back, just to make sure we stay on this side, but there it is, okay. And this is what I've been doing, trying to do off-camera, so I'm not sure if we'll end up recording this one, but I'm just going to keep... Oh, this is really good. So all the while, for the last several months, our forces have been fighting for possession of Middle Congo, and now we've actually taken it. And we've finished construction of our six-inch batteries. Um, okay, good. So that an Admiral Spawn. This is the older class, unfortunately, I'm pretty sure. I have no idea what this Camelian is. Oh, this is the faster one. Okay, yeah. So we have two light cruisers. I don't have any idea what we could possibly encounter here. I really don't. Well, let's find out. Okay, well, things are really, really, really close. It looks like we're already in, ah, uh, we're in 
Let's go to line ahead and turn together to encourage torpedo launching. And we're on the correct wind side, so let's try to stay that way. Squat max. We did hit them twice. It is an infinite class, so that's their best line of light cruiser, if I'm not mistaken. Interesting that the search line actually is the same width as the line abreast. I did not know that. Now the infinite class is 25, no it's 27 knots. So we've already destroyed one of the guns. Oh man. You know what? We can force this group into... Let's just do line of breast not turn together. Wait, that doesn't work. I guess if you don't do turn together it goes to line ahead. Uh, that's unfortunate. Too bad the Admiral Spawn is the head of this group because if it was the other one we could force them to max speed and actually uh, just separate the two ships, but in an attempt to find this ship wherever it is. But I don't think we're going to find it. We can just head back towards, oh gosh, where's the nearest French port? I, I don't even know. We've just taken the middle Congo from them. I think it's Sierra Leone. I mean, this is somewhere over here. Okay, wow, it's good heavens. Way the heck over here. What's kind of, is this a bug? It looks like we can actually see the minefields from a certain distance zoomed out. Anyway, it didn't matter. That wasn't like a, a necessary conflict to fight to begin with. And we are thwarting a lot of their convoy rating. Unfortunately, I did try to set some more people to convoy rating as well. And it doesn't look like, okay, the rabbit is now going to move to active fleet because she's out of date. When they go out of date, I'll try to put them into uh, active force because I don't think they raid as well if they're out of date. So we still have the four fox raiding in the Mediterranean. And actually, I changed her to rating. And I have the Habsburg rating up in Northern Europe. And I think I have one light cruiser rating in West Africa, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, I don't. But let me change one to be rating. Oh, that's right. Short, sh short range ships can't. So I could get the Admiral Spawn to raid. Might as well. Maybe that'll prevent her from being paired with my slightly faster class of light cruiser. All right, well, let's just keep pushing then. This is really nice. So the next, um, the next ship I make, the next capital ship I make, I can actually get the turrets, the double, the two turrets. See, this is what I've gotten twice now. Uh, we're on rest level still at seven, so that's okay. Now this is better. It might be just another episode full of the wonderful attempt to hunt down all these French ships. Where they're even coming from. I mean, what are they doing? I don't know what I would do. Is, you know, you would expect some kind of response to kind of protect whatever ships are left. In World War One and in World War Two, both um, Germany, for example, had uh, the German ships had standing orders not to engage. You know, Jutland was kind of a the last, I mean, it was a huge engagement, but after that, the German fleet kind of sat in port, and that's kind of what they were supposed to be doing all along, and the same thing in World War II. You would expect a similar response here, where after you lose 90% of your navy or so, you begin to say, okay, we need to avoid conflict. Like, we're so outnumbered that it's, there's no point in sending our fleet out, because we don't have, we can't possibly match them in a fight, which is, I think that's the reason why he's like, the French commander keeps def, um, declining the fights. They can't possibly match me ship for ship. I mean, I just outnumber them pretty severely, not just in uh, heavy ships. I mean, they're heavy ships in mine. They could probably do some real damage, in fact. However, in terms of... Um, Escorts. I have way more escorts, and that could be uh, devastating. A torpedo run with my destroyers could end up sinking battle cruisers or anything like that. So for this reason, you would expect that. Oh wow, we got hit in the belt. I guess um, the French would actually start avoiding fights, and this is all but over. Let's go ahead and just make our peace. 
Oh, we hit her with the torpedo at the same time. I thought that was me. I was very concerned for a second. But no, we got away. Another sunk ship. Let's, for, like, just to humor myself, let's just go ahead and see what France has left in terms of ships. They have no heavy cruisers still. They have nine light cruisers still float somewhere. Only two submarines. I mean, compare that to... Oh, I only have five. I guess I'm building a whole bunch, nine. <laughs> So we've lost several submarines as well. And see, they're up to seven battle cruisers. So they actually have a decent sized fleet, but nine light cruisers, 14 destroyers. I mean, to, to be honest, it's not that much worse than mine. But, oh well. All right, so we didn't lose a submarine and here we go again. It's the never-ending loop. I feel like I'm stuck in an infinite loop, like the the code for France's surrender didn't get programmed in somehow. Very good. Okay, uh, we want to head south. Basically, we want to head right at them, because if it's a light cruiser engagement, we know we can win because they don't have any heavy cruisers. <laughs> All right, so let's just go like so. Yeah, yeah, well, they can hit us a few times, but it's gonna be over soon. Let's launch some torpedoes if we can. Yeah, it's gonna be over soon. There's a torpedo launching. See, it causes them to turn, if nothing else. And then we can get some more hits on them. Very good. Okay, that was nice and quick. You know, I've gotten it down though. We are pretty quick at ending those engagements. <laughs> if, if there's nothing else you can say about it. <laughs> this victory point total has been about the same for forever though. All right, well, I don't know what to do. These anti-war demonstrations have been taking place in France for God knows how long. Got several more submarines. Prince Eugen has been in and out of the docks with, report, um, with problems. Oh, the St. George is ready. Well, let's send her to North Northern Europe well, as soon as we can. Dromedar, probably another one in the Mediterranean, but somehow we keep engaging in the Celtic Sea slash the Bay of Biscay. But oh well. We are winning most of these engagements, so I shouldn't complain. Alright, Squad Max. And we want to head slightly north of them to try to get on the east side. But if they're going to head south, then we'll just... Go ahead and go. Oh, it's fax class. This one is new. This is definitely new. 6,600 tons. Presents a reasonable uh, fight for us. So you know what? I'm going to be a little more careful about this because what is their dromedar here? Oh, it is the Navar class, but just look at the difference in weight. It's like 5,000 to about 6,500, so they're like 33% larger than us. It's not a huge deal with light cruisers. We both have six inch guns, which is probably the main thing. Okay, we're still getting some hits. Very good. Lots of hits, good. Encourage torpedo launching. Okay, let's close in a little bit more because we've got several hits. Let's slow down to 22 or so. I think that also helps your accuracy. Double back. Yeah, I think we got them though. There it is. Lots of hits, perfect. Great, and I missed a torpedo, but it caused them to turn away, so there it is. Very good, so a new class of ship for us to sink, basically. That's the only thing I saw. <laughs> and there's still no success for the French. And if I were them, I would, honestly, I would have some kind of order. I don't know if you can do that. It was historical that you could issue an order like the Germans did, not to leave port. I think um, one, of the, one of the first battles... I can't remember what battle it was, but it was a battle where um, the the British decided to raid um, a port, and there was only a few German ships patrolling the waters, and the German um, fleet actually responded, thinking it was only a few light cruisers, but it was like the entire, well, it wasn't the entire, but it was a, a lot of dreadnoughts and battle cruisers of the British forces that were waiting outside. Um, they were trying to suck them into an ambush, basically. And it was successful. I think the destroyers from the British lured out some light cruisers of the 
Germans, and they ended up sinking several little light cruisers. So th that was the reason why that conflict happened, though, is because the Germans weren't supposed to be leaving like very friendly waters, their home waters. So uh, you should have some kind of option if you're losing a war or you know something's going poorly. I guess you would just be pushing for peace because there's no land war abstraction. Of course, in World War One is mainly a land war. The world, the naval battles didn't really matter. That's why it didn't matter that Germany was losing. It was just a a prestige, an honor, a point of pride. So, why am I talking? I should be going to the next... Okay, there we go. Finally. Oh my gosh, it took you guys forever. Say what you will about the French, but they definitely... They last quite a long time. Alright, now we can pick a new ship. Do I want a Dreadnought, or do I want... This? I believe that these... Um, the Rune class. Oh, I don't know which ones are which. I don't know which ones are which. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, luckily for me, they're right over here. All right, so we could take the 36,000 ton. This is actually seems like a really good dreadnought, the Charlemagne class. 10 15 inch guns. Yeah, we actually need this. This is important. Hmm. If I want to play it really safe, I could just take. Uh, like the Sfax, because that one's not a bad ship. Speed of 30, I mean, it's it's pretty good. Only four torpedo tubes, though. That means no... It doesn't have any surface-mounted torpedo tubes. That's still a fine decision for a light cruiser, I think. It's a terrible decision for a destroyer, but... Alright, but let's see. If we're going to get the most out of it, we might as well just get one of these big ships and then just scrap it right away if it's terrible. Now, the... Let's see. We have 30,000 here versus, okay, we're comparing this one to the one right below it. 30,000, 34 and a half, 28, 28, 11 15 inch guns versus 12 15 inch guns, and 16 5 inch guns versus 24, I mean, I think the choice is obvious. The thing we're not seeing here is the armor. However, I believe, I do believe that uh, the 4,000 extra tons probably means this one has better armor, so it's probably just better all around. Let's do one last comparison, this one versus the top one. So 36 versus 34 and a half, 23 versus 28. 10 15 inch guns versus 12 15 inch guns, 26 inch guns versus 24. Yeah, I think we'll just go ahead and take this rune class. And we'll take the namesake of the class. Just because that uh, is like more, uh, it's like more insulting to the French. <laughs> so let's take this one. Now, uh, this is pretty awesome. Okay, so what are we going to end up taking, though? I don't know. Um, well, Corsica, that's an obvious one. Senegal, we could take the Senegal as well. I don't think we want to take Djibouti or Madagascar. I don't think we want to take anything in the, front, the Asian waters. I don't think we want anything in the Caribbean. I have no idea where New Caledonia is. I have absolutely no idea where New Caledonia is. You know, we could just take Algeria. This rounds us out well, and I think Algeria is also... I, I mean, it's either in West Africa or Northern... Or probably the Mediterranean. I mean, come on. It's the Med, it must be the Mediterranean, right? It's Morocco that's on the... Well, I don't know where they would consider Morocco, to be honest, but they don't have it here, so... This looks good to me. Let's take these colonies. And Djibouti and Mascar um, were ceded to the British. Wow. Well, that was fantastic. I'm so happy that war is finally over. Like, you have no idea how long that took. <laughs> you do have. You have every idea because you've been here with me, but I would say that that took too long. Now, look at West Africa. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that. They might as well call this uh, not Africa anymore. This is like new Austria-Hungary. And the only thing we have to worry about, which is not really a concern because we still have a peace treaty with them, is the British. Pretty sizable deficit right now because the war budget is gone. Unrest did not drop by a huge amount. <laughs> You'd have to say that it's still four, which is pretty high. We've taken Algeria. Oh, we could have taken Tunisia. I didn't see it on the list, but um, I just, I'm oblivious. I didn't notice. 
well, we need something to conquer in future wars, just like we were leaving Sicily with Italy. Now, if we were to try to conquer Sicily, that would have to be through invasion only, because I think it's 12 points to actually uh, trade in the war, which means you can't trade it. So, um, the Mediterranean is basically ours. Again, we do share a substantial amount with the British. Of course, it's the Italian home waters, so they have some presence here. But let's just take a look. Let's go one month just to like cement the budgets, make sure they're all reduced correctly for everyone. And I think I probably need to get rid of the Admiral Spawn. I'm going to go ahead and scrap this ship immediately just to save our budget a little bit. Let's get the St. George. Oh, they are short distance. Well, I'm going to get the St. George to be a permanent retiree in West Africa, actually. So she has her range. When she's there, she'll just have to stay there. But there's nothing left for us to conquer. We don't need any um, battleships there or battle cruisers because unless we fight the British, all we're going to be doing is defending home water. Things have worked out remarkably well in this campaign. If you take a look at the amount of colonies we've been able to get. I was a little worried about getting the West African ones, but we just we went with it, and then we built up a, really a substantial empire here. Um, you can imagine an alternate reality where Austria-Hungary was this successful and actually did have this huge colonial presence now. It's a pretty intriguing. Okay, well, uh, that's yeah. Well, now it's going to be time for de designing new ships as soon as we have the money. It's probably time to upgrade our minesweepers, just doing the same thing we always do, which is absolutely nothing. Do we have better? No, we already started with great three-inch guns. That's fantastic. I'm so glad. So we just save. Oh, we can actually get better fire control. I mean, <laughs> is it worth it? Well, we could get... We could just lower the ammo amount. This is probably too much. How much can we just get for central firing? Uh huh. Hmm. Well, I mean, these guys aren't going to get a chance to fire very much anyway. So we'll go ahead and do this. Why not? I think you can't do 0.5 armor, otherwise I would. Yeah, it's not allowed. I've always wanted to do that for turret top, but it kind of makes sense that you could do half an inch in armor. Well, let me think. No, maybe not. Maybe you can't even make armor. Well, you could make it that thin, but it would just be, it would be unarmored. I, I don't know. It's possible. It's certainly physically possible to make armor that's only half inch thick, but maybe industries at this time, the way they made the iron plates or steel plating, whatever, um, the minimum thickness was probably an inch. All right, well, that's fine. We're just going to take them down to this much ammo, and I mean, not that this matters. Director firing is, it's so silly. You're not going to be using these for anything but coastal patrol anyways. So actually, you know what? I'm going to cancel this. Let's not be too silly about it. Open design for rebuild. I, mean, I am just going to go to central firing. Because how much, I'm sorry, let me do this again. How much does this cost? So it's 629, and if I take this up to director, okay, it's really not a big deal, actually. In fact, it's the same cost as uh, doing the regular upgrade. Okay, then I'm completely okay with this. The fact that it doesn't take any extra ammo. Okay, director firing for our minesweepers, I guess. Sure, why not? It has no fire control. Oh. Oh. I see. So local only doesn't need any fire control positions. But everything else does. Okay, well then local only for you guys. I'll just upgrade it exactly how it was. I was wondering. I was like, you know, this is pretty cool. You can get it for nothing. Well, there is no such thing as free lunch, as we've all heard from economics. And again, it's true. So let's just save this. Okay, fine. Fire control's not the best kind. I don't care. Upgrade you and get everyone else upgrading as well. Just as quick as possible. Okay, very good. Now we have a few more obsolete ships. We have these two destroyers. Well, they do have a speed of 30. That's, that's really not that terrible. And they're elite crews, so I think we will probably upgrade these. 
Um, we won't be doing anything with them, really. Okay, they're cramped accommodations. Ah, they're cramped accommodations. Let's not have these guys. I am going to eliminate them, actually. Sorry, I'm gonna have to retire them because I'm just worried about what the cramped accommodations are doing for my unrest. So let's scrap them. Of course it was said, and I think it's true, or supposed to be true, that accommodations, cramped accommodations only hurt when you're outside of home waters. But my build, my unrest level has climbed pretty significantly, and it mentioned um, accommodations at some point. So I'm gonna try to avoid those in the future. Great, now we can upgrade our St. George II as well. Now we have to make sure we have somebody in West Africa. So we have the St. George moving to West Africa. That's good because I do need to upgrade these battle cruisers to have improved director firing. That's something I can do immediately. Whoops. That's something I can do immediately with my um, Kaiser class ships. So do we have better 13 inch guns? No, so nothing yet. 22. Okay, percent defense was one, that's good. Let's get director firing here. Improve director here. And it doesn't even cost us anything because we had the space available. That's perfect, always the ideal, which means obviously we don't have enough for more ammo, but with the improved director, we should be hitting more often. And these are very good ships. Certainly the, these will last me until the end of this campaign because if nothing else, they can go and act as um, naval invasion forces. But to be honest, 13 inch guns is nothing to scoff at. It may have, I don't think it'll have problems penetrating some ships, but it might get sunk before it sinks other ships in certain situations. Okay, well, I guess that's it. This one has extremely low secondary guns, but that's fine. I mean, with a 12, 13 inch guns, you're mainly gonna be hitting with the 12, 13 inch guns, not the seven, six inch guns. And they'll have better firing. We'll be able to target destroyers with those pretty easily. So we'll save this design. Very good, and we'll take all of these guys in for rebuilding. No time like the present, which brings us to the Habsburg, which we want to move back to the Mediterranean. Very good. And this guy is, let's see what his, um, actually his maintenance is, okay, well of course, because he's in reserve fleet, but let's send him to active fleet. Yeah, this is a good ship. It is short range, so maybe this is another one that we just leave in West Africa for eternity. You know what? No, this one's actually a good one to leave in the Mediterranean for eternity because with the speed of 26, um, she can... Oh, she can't raid. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Hmm. Kind of tough to say where she should go then. I mean, if we remain allied with Great Britain, technically we should be able to use their ports almost indefinitely. I would really like another war with Italy. Probably one more war with one of the miners, like uh, probably Italy. I was, I would say that that's the ideal. Um, and then we can go to war with either Great Britain or the United States for our, as always, our boss fight at the end of the campaign <laughs> where we go and take on the biggest of the biggest. To be honest, I think the biggest of the biggest would be the United States right now because although the Great Britain has um, probably an increased budget thanks to all the wars she's been in, yeah, USA has a bigger budget, but not only that, but the Great Britain has had a lot of ships being sunk. So she might be a little bit lower. And we're like the only nation that is retaining our heavy cruisers, but they have served us well. They have served us long uh, and well. So we're very proud of their service. I don't think there's any reason to eliminate them. Even the St. George is true. I mean, I think Rabbit was mentioning, Captain Rabbit was saying, hey, let's just retire the St. George, but... She deserves a hero's death, I think. And a hero's death is not just a hero's funeral, although I think that's actually true. You could get, you don't have to die to be a hero, but in this game, that's how we're gonna play it. So, well, the time has really crept up on me. It's been 30 minutes already. I will go ahead and we'll just do this St. George II rebuild. I don't think these guys are worthy of replacing the machinery because basically they're not going to be fast enough to outrun battle cruisers, and that's the only thing that we would try to accomplish. So we're just going to leave all that in there. I don't think we have the ability to do anything better. Basically, we'll just give them better um, improved director, take it down to 115, get director firing for their secondaries, and this is a very potent ship still. I mean, it has great armor, great armor. 
The six inch turrets, two and a half inch top, three inch secondary, very good. Just all very good things. So if we wanted, we could even probably lower the secondaries down to 2.5, but I don't know what we would try to accomplish with that other than maybe getting the turret top up a little higher, but two and a half is still something. So I, I really like this ship. It was, it's been one of my best designs for a heavy cruiser. And I think that's been shown by the success of this ship throughout my campaign. So we'll go ahead and save this. I think everything's good here. I, I just used to hate heavy cruisers, but they have performed incredibly well. All right, so we'll get everyone else to rebuild as well. Budget's gonna be uh, in the tank for a little bit. Negative 10, negative 11, somewhere around there. But that's okay. Let's take out, uh, sorry, let's take out. Let's take a look at this ship a little more closely. We'll pretend that we're gonna rebuild it. So what do we have in terms of 50 inch guns? Let's have it built in the local yard. I don't even think we have 15 inch guns. <laughs> I, I'm opening this design for rebuild and it has 500 space available. More space if they use our, this is for rebuild though. I don't really understand this. Does this work? Single mounts, I see. Okay, that's not bad. All we need to do, what, what the only thing it's saying is that we have to do this. Does this save any, it does save a significant amount of weight. And we wanna take down the secondaries to like four anyway. I think we will rebuild this ship and then use it. It's got a speed of 28, let's just make it a little bit better. First of all, I think the most potent thing is, most important thing. Oh my gosh, that conning tower. Are you kidding me, France? Oh my gosh. Ugh. Okay, what do we do, what do we do? How do we treat this ship? If it's, I mean, we can just hope the conning tower never gets hit. That's not like entirely unreasonable. No point in making the turrets that much stronger then. Her top fine, deck is fine. Is this, oh, this is all or nothing. Oh, I, I can't mess with it. I'm pretty sure right now it's all or nothing armor, which I don't have still, and it's almost 1920. Uh, this is another one of those games where you just don't get all or nothing armor nearly fast enough, which is sad, but that's okay. All right, so we don't mess with this because it's probably all or nothing armor right now, but we don't have that, so fair enough. Okay, well, uh, like I said, I've run a bit over time, so thanks for watching, and I'm so happy we're in peace. We'll hopefully be able to maintain peace for at least one episode, the next one. What we'll be doing is probably redesigning some of our ships. I think we need either a new light cruiser or a new destroyer. Either one would serve us as well. Maybe a new light cruiser because we only have the short range one, and at this point we're gonna be able to project power because our budget has gone up pretty significantly. Um, Okay, now that the war's over, we're second to last again. <laughs> well, that's that's pretty depressing. After all our work, after all the colonies we've gained, we're still basically a pathetic economy. And Austria-Hungary was a industrial base, I mean, just like Germany um, in the early 1900s, so I take a little offense at that, but probably it's accurate. I wonder if Austria-Hungary's economy should be at least stronger than Italy's. Okay, it was, actually. Yeah, it was. Hmm. Well, we'll continue speculating that in the next episode. So, thanks for watching, and until the next one, take care.